Hello, class. Chapter nine, the end. The last chapter. And this is gonna be a little more complicated than chapter eight was. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna to try to do this all in one uh, video because we only have to do these first couple of learning goals. Describe the standard setting process and explain how standard costs relate to budgets and variances. When you see the word variance, what they're talking about there is that there's a difference between a budgeted amount and an actual amount. Now, we can look at it two ways. We can look at it in total. We budgeted 10,000 for something, the actual cost came in at 11. Right, that's a $1,000 variance. And since we spent more than we thought we would, that variance would be considered unfavorable. If you spend less than you thought you would, that variance is considered favorable. So unfavorable versus uh, favorable. So that's one way to look at um, variances in total. But there's another way to look at them in a per unit amounts. Now, we're not gonna get really deep into this. Um, again, this is another one of those topics that if you take more accounting courses, you'll get really, really deep into it. But uh, we're just gonna really kind of touch the surface on it. So when you see the words standard cost, what does that mean uh, as it relates to budgets? Well, when we talk about budgets, we talk about total amounts. And when we talk about standard costs, we're talking about per unit amounts, right? So we said that the budget was $1,000 unfavorable, right? Now, why was that? Um, it could be for one of two reasons. It could be because the price that we paid for something was more than the standard cost, right? Or the volume was different than um, what we budgeted. Okay, so what is a standard cost system? It's kind of a budget, but it's on a per unit basis. And when we talk about the variances, we could have variances in direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. Right? That's what we're gonna concentrate on here. So in a standard cost system, all costs are applied to products based on preset standards. In other words, budgeted amounts, but on a per unit basis. So when you see the word budget, think of total amounts. And when you see the term standard cost, think of uh, per unit amounts. Now, why would there be a difference between a, a standard amount and a, uh, a, a budgeted amount, right? Why would there be a difference? Primarily due to two reasons, quantity or price. In other words, we paid more or less for something than we thought we would. That's one reason. And another reason might be that we made more or less of something than we thought we would, or we used some something more or less than we thought we would. All right, so here's an example of standard cost. And remember, this is Levi Strauss is the example to make a pair of jeans. Um, we need direct material, direct labor, variable overhead and fixed overhead, right? And if we are going to make uh, 30,000 pairs of jeans, uh, 15,000 pairs of jeans, right? These are what the different costs would be. Standard cost per unit amounts, right? 
So we need two yards of material at $1.50 per yard is $3. Um, direct labor, it takes a quarter of an hour, which is 15 minutes, right? A quarter of an hour to sew the jeans together. And if we're paying somebody $14 an hour, that's $3.50. And the variable overhead is 40% of direct labor cost. So 40% times 350 is $1.40. 40% uh, 40 times $14 is $5.60, right? And if the fixed overhead is $30,000 and we're going to make 15,000 pairs of jeans, we could say that the fixed overhead is $2 for a pair of jeans. But remember, that's not that critical. So what does it cost to make a pair of jeans? It costs $9.90. Okay. Now, when we make budgets, we have an ideal standard, which we call a um, static budget or a master budget and, and we say that we're gonna, and in that master budget, we are making an assumption, not only about these costs, but how many pairs of jeans that we intend to make. So in this example, we're make, we intend to make 15,000 pairs of jeans, right? So those numbers would go into what you call the master budget or the static budget. One level of activity, 15,000 pairs of jeans. Right? Now, what's a flexible budget? A flexible budget says, okay, well, we have to be able to build some flexibility into our budgeting system. What happens if we wind up making more than 15,000 pairs of jeans or less than 15,000 pairs of jeans? How does that affect the budget? Right? So here's all these standard cost amounts the material, the labor, the overhead, the variable overhead. And this was the master budget, right? It assumed that we were making 15,000 pairs of jeans. So it should cost us $148,500 to make 15,000 pairs of jeans. How much would it cost to make 10,000 pairs of jeans? How much would it cost to make 20,000 pairs of jeans? Right? Our best estimate is it's going to be 15000 but we have to prepare ourselves in case things go better or worse than we anticipated. So that's why we're going to do another budget for 10,000 pairs of jeans and another one for 20000 Notice, though, the fixed cost stays the same. So that's why that $2 is really not that important a number, because that 30000 uh, dollar stays the same no matter how many pairs of jeans we make. So where do you come up with these numbers? Well, here we multiplied 15,000 times three, 15,000 times 350, 15,000 times a dollar 40, right? So for the flexible budget, we're going to take the unit amounts and multiply them by 10,000 units. And then we're going to take the unit amounts and multiply them by 20,000 units. So, we, we're, so we're prepared. We're prepared for uh, different scenarios that might happen. Maybe things won't go as well as we thought they would. Uh, that assumes 10,000. Or maybe things are going to go better than we thought they would. And that assumes that we made and sold 20,000 pairs of jeans. Okay. Now, variance analysis. We want to compare the actual amounts to the budgeted amounts, right? I mean, which time has to pass first, and what actually has to happen has to happen first, right? So this is this is beyond the the planning phase. This is what you would call the control phase. Remember, you had planning, implementation, and and control. Planning is when you make the budget and the flexible budgets. And implementation is you put the plan into operation. And then control is you want to monitor, analyze the results, compare the budgets to the actual amounts to see how close you came and if you have to make any adjustments. 
what are the reasons why there is a difference between budget and actual? Could be due to volume or spending or actually both. Okay. So we have one homework problem where we're going to have to do this. I believe it's exercise three where we're going to look at the actual results and we have a master budget and we have a flexible budget. All right, so we're going to compare the flexible budget to the actual results. Those will give us the spending variances and we're going to compare the master budget to the flexible budget. Those will give us the volume variances. It's not as complicated as it sounds. You'll see when we get to the homework problem, it's not that difficult. It's more difficult to try to explain. Right, and here they're giving you some reasons why your variances could be favorable or unfavorable, right? You could read those at your leisure. Okay, so I wanted to, um, Get to the homework. We had exercise 9-2 on page 423. Let's take a look at that. Preparing flexible budget for manufacturing costs. So Oliver Company, or Olive Company, sorry, makes silver belt buckles. The company's master budget appears in the first column of the table. So this is what they give you in the problem when it starts. Now notice they're saying that the master budget is to make 5,000 units. And then, it wants us to compute flexible budgets based on 4,000, 6,000, and 7,000 units. So notice that the fixed overhead is the same all across the board, right? It doesn't matter how many of these buckles we make, the fixed overhead is still going to be $18,000. So, you know, you could get that out right out of the way, just fill in that line all the way across. Now what you need to do is you need to figure out, okay, based on my master budget or static budget, what are my per unit costs? I don't know if you remember a while ago, I think it was chapter five, we did the problem with the canoes. Um, this is very similar to that. <clears throat> remember we had a problem <clears throat> where we were making canoes and we wanted to see what was it like if we make 500 or 600 or 700. Anyway, so let's figure out the per unit amounts. If we're gonna spend 15,000 on direct materials and we're making 5,000 units, that means we're spending $3 a unit on, on material. For labor, if we're spending $30,000 to make 5,000 units, that means we're spending $6 per unit, right? Remember, these are belt buckles. With variable overhead, we're spending $8,000 to make 5,000 uh, buckles, that's $1.60 a buckle. We don't have to worry about per unit amounts with fixed cost. So the total manufacturing cost, 15,000 plus 30,000 plus 8,000 plus 18,000 is 71,000. Now, what if we were only gonna make 4,000 instead of five? We multiply 4,000 units times three, that's 12. 4,000 units times six, that's 24. 4,000 units times $1.60, that's 6,400, plus the 18,000 of fixed cost, 60,400 total. Do the same thing at 6,000. If we were to make 6,000, buckles, how much would that cost? 6,000 times three, 18,000. 6,000 times six, 36,000. 
6,000 times $1.60, 9,600, plus the 18,000 in fixed overhead, total 81,600. What about to make 7,000? 7,000 times three, 21,000. 7,000 times six, 42,000. 7,000 times $1.60, 11,200, plus the 18,000, 92,200 in total. All right, so that's exercise 9-2. And the, the key was to figure out the per unit amounts because those are the amounts that you have to multiply by the different levels of production. All right, so that's a flexible budget, how it works. Um, now we can move on to number, number uh, three. And number three, I didn't type it all in yet because I thought it would be better to show you um, how to actually do the problem, right? So you're gonna to have to bear with some of my typing and calculating and so forth, but I thought it would be better to work through it this way. <coughs> so exercise three, which is on page 424, Gleason Guitars produces acoustic guitars. The table below contains budget and actual information for the month of June. So they give you this column. They didn't give you the total, but I just added it up, right? And they give you this column. And again, I added it up, came to 55,000. So the master budget said, if I make 200 units, this is what it should cost. And these are the actual numbers. But here I made 225 units, which was 25 more than the master. Now, if you look at the way the problem is laid out, everything else is blank. Everything else is blank, right? So what should we do? Well, I made another column. So remember up here, we have this column for per unit amounts. Well, you really need to know what the per unit amounts are before you can continue. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take this master budget, which is based on 200 units, and we're going to make a flexible budget based on 225. So what did we do? First, we had to figure out what the per unit amounts were and then multiply it by the new amount of production, right? Like we did here. We figured out the per unit amounts and then we multiplied them by 4,000, 6,000, or 7,000. Well, here we're gonna take the unit amounts and multiply it by 225. So 225 times 70, right, is 15. Seven fifty, right? And let's come down here now. 225 times 110 is 24,750. And 225 times 40 is 9,000. 9,000. And we're still going to assume fixed cost of 11,000. So the flexible budget, if I add all those numbers together, that comes out to 60,500. Now remember, this is the flexible budget, right? This is a flexible budget. Right? And what does the flexible budget say? Well, if I were to make 225 units, this is what it should have cost based on the standard costs, which are based on the master budget. Now, what's the difference? What's the variance? Well, the spending variance is the difference between the actual cost and the flexible budget. So, 
15,500 minus 15,750 equals, right, a minus 250, and that's favorable, right? I'm going to put the letter F there, right? That's favorable. Why is that favorable? Because you spent less than you should have. Right now, when you're doing the, let me take the minus sign out of it. Because when you're doing the problem on connect, they don't want a minus sign, right? Why is it favorable? Because you spent two hundred and fifty dollars less than you should have. Now let's look at this one: twenty-six thousand two hundred minus twenty-four thousand seven fifty equals. 1,450. Now, this is unfavorable, right? Why is it unfavorable? Because you only should have spent 24,750 and you actually spent 26,200. You spent more than you should have, right? Here you spent less than you should have. Here you spent more than you should have. Right, so here you spent 8,250. You only you should have spent 9,000. Right? So you spent $750 less than you should have, and that's why that'll be favorable. Now here you actually spent 11,500. You should have spent 11,000, you spend $500 more than you should have, that's why it's unfavorable. And if I look over here, 61,450 minus 60,500, that's $950 unfavorable, right? Why is it unfavorable? Because you spent $950 more than you should have. Remember, the flexible budget is what you should have spent if you made 225 guitars, these are. So the spending variance is the difference between the actual cost and the flexible budget. The volume variance is the difference between the flexible budget and the master budget. So here you've got 15,750 minus 14,000 equals 1750, okay? Now, that's unfavorable, why? Because you only should have spent 14,000, you spent 15,750. So you're $1,750 more than you should have spent. Right, here you've got 24,750 minus 22,000, right? And that's uh, 2,750. And that again is unfavorable because you spent more than the budget. And here you've got 9,000 uh, minus 8,000. That equals 1,000. Right, and that is also unfavorable because you spent more than the budget amount. Right, and here, zero, right? 11,000 minus 11,000 is zero, there's no, no difference. So now what's the difference here between 60,500 and 55,000? Right, that's 5,500. And again, it's unfavorable because you spent more than the master budget. 
right? That's all that was to that problem. It seemed very confusing when you first sit down and start, right? But just make sure you get your numbers straight. And the key was to figure out what these are because they didn't tell you, right? But you needed to figure out what the unit costs were in order to take the unit costs and multiply it by 225 to get the flex budget. Once you get your numbers in the flex budget, you've got to compare the actual to the flex, that's the spending variance. Then you compare the master to the flex, that's the volume variance. Right? So there you go, that's chapter nine. Right? We are done, we are finished. It has been my pleasure to have been your teacher this uh, semester. And I wish you nothing but uh, the best in your future. And uh, if you think I can help you in any way, just you know, don't hesitate to uh, contact me. If I can, I will. If I can't, I'll tell you I can't. But uh, good luck. Have a great rest of your summer. And um, good luck. <laughs>